Hey everyone, welcome to my unboxing of Ravel's brand new 125th Ford 71 Mustang Boss 351. So yes, this kit arrived with me the other day. It is a brand new tool kit. Uh, it comes in a couple of boxings. This is a Rebel Germany one. There's a Rebel USA one, which if I remember, I'll pop a picture up on screen. And I believe there's another re-release coming based on this kit of the Diamonds Forever car out of the James Bond film. So whichever box you get, it'll be the same base kit in there. I think the differences between the US and the Germany ones will be the instructions and the decals. I think the plastic is exactly the same in each one. Now, this has been regarded as a very, very good kit. I've seen several people comment and say it's a brilliant kit. So, let's go and have a look at what the hype is, and let's see what the kit is like. Right then, so it's Revels 125th 71 Ford Mustang Boss 351. It's a level 4 kit. It's a Revel Germany boxing. Um, it has this typical box art that the Revel Germany kits get. It looks all right. I don't think it's the most aesthetically pleasing box art. Uh, but it's certainly not the worst one I've seen. It's actually quite a nice profile uh, front-on shot of the car. Um, and yeah, it looks good. It is an officially licensed Ford product. So it does have the very cool holograms on there, which are uh, they're very trippy, those things. Uh, 129 parts, uh, 125th scale. And it's going to be 19.2 centimetres long, which is about 6 feet 9 in inches if you're used to uh, using imperial measurements. Uh, that may not be correct. Um, on the back, you've got some pictures of the built model. So again, in the scheme on the front of the box, and I'll be honest, I actually quite like that scheme in the blue. Uh, although I'd probably do grab a blue if I was going to do it. That might well be grab a blue. I can't quite tell. But I do like the silver on there. I think it looks really, really cool. So yeah, we'll see about the scheme. I'll see what decals are in it. Uh, got a nice depicted engine. Got an absolutely horrendous wooden steering wheel, which just looks plastic. Um, and yeah, overall pretty good. All the uh, calls, call outs are there for the colours, which we won't be using at all. Uh, and overall, it looks good. Now, I've opened it, but I've not really looked at this at all. As you can see, it's all still sealed in its bag. So we've got that. We've got the box, which is typical end opening Revel box, which are horrid and hateful but it is what it is we've got our instructions with our pretty comprehensive decal sheet which we'll look at in a little bit and then we've got a mass of plastic to look at here so let's open this up and have a little looky loo what we've got so we've got one pack of sprues we've got clear parts oh two lots of clear parts what the hell I think I've been accidentally given two clear parts. I have. Well, I'm not going to complain about that. Always handy to have clear parts. I've accidentally been given two lots. Fair play. We'll pop those there and there. We've got a chrome tree. Well, chrome sprue. There's quite a lot of parts to this. I'll, I'll give it that. There is a lot of parts. And... Ooh. Okay. Have they listened everywhere? Ah, oh, such a shame. I thought they actually started to listen to us on the Chrome, but they haven't. It's actually on the side still. But anyway, it is what it is. So, we'll start with the body. Let's get this open. Big, big car, these. Absolutely massive thing. Really pretty shape. Very, very cool looking car. This might have to be bumped up the build list because... I do love the look of this. I've heard a lot of good things about this kit. Uh, I can see where they're coming from. So, a beautifully moulded body. We've got a little little wisp of flash, which literally rub off with your fingers. No real difficult. Big, big fastback body shell on this. Absolutely stunning looking thing. Got some nice surface detail on the front. We've got the old manky moulded in wipers, which I absolutely hate, but it is part of it. But the rest of the body... Is really cleanly molded. We've got seam lines running front to back, so it runs across the roof there, run down the windows, and I don't think it actually goes over the front wing. No, it must go down in here. So that's pretty clean, but it's going to go over the back and down the side. So the body is really clean, really, really clean. Uh, that is a beautiful piece of plastic. Panel lines are nice and thin and not too thick. 
They are really nice. You can have a look at that, you can see. Very, very nice body shell on that. That is a beautiful looking car. Are we straight? Looks fairly straight to me. Yeah, it looks pretty good. That is a big, beautiful car. Love the shape of that. I do love these fastback shapes. They look epic. We've got some tires, which again, even through the bag, they look really good. Fold them all the same. No manufacturers on the side, which is a real pet hate of mine, but it is what it is. Treads good on the bottom of them. Got kind of a seam line there, nothing too dry. So let me turn my lights a bit more so we can see things a bit better. Yeah. There's a bit of a seam line there, nothing really outspoken. The tyres are nice, to be fair. I just would like to see some tyre markings on there. I think it always just adds to a build. Clear parts, we'll open one of these. I normally do these in a different uh, order. We've got two clear parts, which is always good. It's quite funny to see how many others have two clear parts in there. So the glass itself... Is actually really good for Revel. That is actually really, really nice, clean, well molded glass. You've got the side windows, rear screen, front screen, uh, front and rear lights. Yeah, really, really nice. They are like, not optically perfect. There is a flaw there, literally right there. If it'll show, it's going to be very difficult to show on camera. There's a little bit of a cast floor in the um, plastic, but you're not really going to see that unless you really, or you can actually see it if you look. It's right there. It's like a little angled shape. I've got to get that to show on camera. Don't know if that can show. But yeah, there is a bit of a floor in there, but it's not the end of the world. To be fair, it's actually pretty nice plastic for Revel. I've seen a lot worse on the clear parts. So that's good. And obviously I have two. Hey, that's always a good Billy bonus to have. So we can, uh, yeah, we'll keep that one spare. It's exactly the same. I wonder if it's got the same floor in it. Should we have a look? I know necessarily you guys can't see it, but I can. So Nope, but this one's scratched in that place. <laughs> Oh, it does have the same floor on it. Yeah, it is there. So it must be a mold, a mold issue, that. It's exactly the same. But this one's actually scratched. You see the scratches there on the front? Well, if you look at the top of that scratch there, that's just going into the light now. You can see that mold issue I'm talking about. It's like a weird angle. You can just see it now there. There it is, where it's hitting the light. The edge of the bottom of my light. So... Bit of a shame, but like I say, it's probably some of the better clear parts I've seen for Revell over the years. There's a lot of parts to this kit. There really is a lot of sprues. Obviously, they're doubled up on the uh, thing. So we've got some of the front sections here. So this is our front grille and front lights, and I'm guessing that's the under tray that goes underneath. It certainly looks like it is. Again, beautifully molded. Wing mirrors are there as well. Very nicely done. Nice high quality plastic mold. I'm quite impressed by that to be honest. Very, very good. Nice. Yeah, that is really cool. We've got the chassis itself. Which again isn't bad. You know, it's a chassis. What you know, what else can we look at really? Um cross members are there, suspension turrets there. I've actually got some nice detail on them for once. Which is good. Very, very good. We've then got the wheels, the backs of the wheels. We've got the cross member on the uh, engine bay. I'll zoom in a touch so you can see. We've got the prop shaft, transmission tunnel, anti-roll bar, steering wheel, shockers, springs, accelerator pedal, clutch, etc. And again, beautifully molded parts. Really, really nice and clean. Very, very, very cool. Very, very nice. Yeah, they are really nice parts, those. So lovely. And then on here, we've got the radiator, radiator surrounds. We've got the dashboard. Actually, a really nice dash on this. Very cool. Radiator support, subframes, the bulkhead, firewall, whatever you want to call it, steering columns. I don't know if you get two of them there, possibly. But again, really nice molded parts. Really, really high quality. 
very very nice do you know what i can see this getting bumped up the build list i am loving the look of this so a lot of people i spoke to i think at least seven eight people have built this or know somebody has built it and they've all said it's an absolutely fantastic kit so yes this may need bumping up the build order a bit right so we've got the rear tail light section there we've got exhausts we've got lower rear bumper is it can't quite tell we've got uh the front lip we've got the rear spoiler and again impeccably molded parts there's some tricky little sprue points there that need cutting off and cleaning up not sure what's going on there you've got massive ones this side and like little nubbins this side so i'm not sure what's going on there but either way get a knife in there or a small thinny stick cut down or you know a uh, customizable sander cut down you'll be fine in there from valance uh lower splitter and the rear spoiler the rear spoiler supports there they are very very small they're going to be a little bit fiddly to do but again beautifully molded parts very very nice yep looking really good we've got the massive bonnet or hood depending on where you're from that is one big ass bonnet that is huge that in length is seven and a half centimeters alone that is one big hood wow that'd keep you dry when it was raining very very nice and the intakes are actually cut in there which is nice to see as well so very very cool very very nice i'm loving that uh we've got the engine transmission we've got the sump cylinder heads uh intake manifold water pump the fan housing with its funny offset legged um fan the distributor we've got oil filter we've got the air cleaner headers or manifolds we've got the auxiliary belts some cooling hoses very nicely done some really nice detail on the engine and the transmission as you can see there very 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 cool the rest of it water pump housing really really nice intake manifolds looking good i'm taking it the carb's going to be on the chrome sprue maybe start motor at the top with the valve covers very cool i i can see this getting built i can see it being built it's calling me it's calling me and grab a blue it really is calling me and grab a blue i've just done a mustang but this thing is different look at the size of the door cards they are huge this car is monstrous. Absolutely monstrous. We've got our interior with some of the smallest back seats I've ever seen. I think it would have been a 2 plus 2 coupe, which it is really, isn't it, I suppose? Back seats are a bit of a less concern than the fronts. We've got some really nice, unusual design front seats. I like these. They're quite smart. Yeah, I can look at those. There's the front, there's the backs. Huge door cards. The doors are massive on this thing. When they say they, uh, someone was telling me today they really bumped the size of the Mustangs up at this era, and damn, they certainly did. This thing's massive. Sun visors, exhaust silencers there, or mufflers, and uh, again, just impeccably molded. Absolutely superbly done. Absolutely, I'm, I'm really impressed by Revel's detail on their molding there. It is absolutely beautiful. Very cool. Get this flocked up, get some interest in there, get all the. Um, rear compartment all flock that will look very very cool so there's all the main plastic parts we've got some chrome bits left we've got the wheels i'm not even going to pretend to know what these are Krager mag light things i don't know that they're, they're they're wheels they look like alloy to me uh, i'm probably wrong they're probably steel or made of i don't bloody know the crocheted out of bloody futons or something god only knows they're actually quite a nice wheel and actually w really well chrome to be fair i still think they need hitting with some semi-gloss to dull them down a bit because they're a little bit too toyish but really nice high quality chrome so yeah i'd probably just leave those be hit them with um yeah probably hit them with semi-gloss and they'll be fine. I don't think they're worth stripping to re chrome because they're actually very, very nicely finished. They are very, very cool. And then the chrome sprue 
itself. So now I've seen a couple of good things in here. I've seen on the front and rear bumper, it looks like the connection points are on the back. So yes, they are. So if we look at the front and rear bumper, the sprue points here and here, there, are actually on the back of the part. So if you snip those off, it doesn't destroy the chrome under here. Yeah, the downside is, well, no, mate, you might get away with it. Yeah, you might not have to re-chrome. That's still semi-glossy because it is very, very toy-like. It's too chrome. It's way too shiny. Um, some of the smaller parts. Um, let me have a look. No, they haven't. Why can't these people learn this? Why can't modelers build these kits for us? Look, all the sprue points are on the bottom of the chrome. So as soon as you cut that off, you've got bare plastic. Why can't these manufacturers learn to put the connection points on the back? So if you do want to use the chrome, you can cut it off and use it fine. Because that whole lot uh, is going to be chroming. And if you're going to do all this, all the fuel filler and the emblems, you're going to have to do the bumpers as well. So it's a real shame. I mean, look at the, is that a her shifter there? It, the connection points on the top. Why, why can't Revel think of these things? and do exactly what they've done the front and rear bumpers but the connection points behind so that when you cut it off <coughs> it doesn't damage the part it's very very frustrating to get <coughs> excuse me a very nice high quality new kit and stupid things like that um ruin it it is a real shame just making sure i've gone through everything with you guys i have so there's all the parts we've got some bits sticking out which is a pet hate of mine but it is what it is decals we'll look at quickly this is a very very comprehensive decal sheet it's absolutely uh beautiful um it's printed in italy so that's the company that begins with a v whose name i can never ever remember but you've got black and chrome trim which again i really do like that scheme on the box i do like it but what i don't like but is it supposed to be there? Is that demarcation? You can see the, the silver around the, uh, the decal. But is there a real decal on the car that goes around that? Possibly. If it is, then I think that might be the scheme we do. Because I do like that. But I do it in grabber blue. I don't know if that is grabber blue. It's one of Revel's colours. But we've got a really nice scheme. We've got some wood panelling for the dashboard and what have you. We've got instruments. We've got belts, should you wish to put them in. There is loads and loads of different decals on there there is tons of them we've got all different number plates do we have a uk number plate uh, yep i think that'll be it there old h plate in the uk i would say that would be it because that's gonna be like what's this 71 h yeah, I think that it, I think that is a British plate there, and you got New, New Zealand, uh, you got D Germany. Um, obviously, there's some US ones, but yeah, that's a really good decal sheet. You got the marker lights for the lights on the side, all the Boss 351s, all the Rammers, all the placards for the engine bay, the uh, the Pony Mustang there as well. There is a whole ton of different decals. I'll just hold it up and scroll up for you. So you can look at it. Uh, I say you get the choice of the black stripes. Or the silver ones. And they are really nice decals. Really, really nice. Yeah, very nice. And all the license plate number plates down there as well. Lots of choice. Lots of choice. Like I say, really, really nice decal sheet that is. You can get the door lock decals over there as well, which were my new trick from Mr. Camillary. He's using dressmaker pins. That's what we'll be doing on this one. So, let's have a look what we've got here. So, you've got your typical new style Revel instructions. These are really good. They're really nice. They're definitely a, a step up. We've got a picture of the box art, which I really like. That I think looks really, really cool. We've got the do's and don'ts in there, so uh, don't read instructions with no face, for Christ's sake. 
don't read the instructions with no face. Uh, you can only use part 22, apparently, according to this. Um, you've got to tape your car up like it's a plane. So please make sure you put rubber bands around the fuselage. And um, glue your tip. Yeah, be careful with your tip. And a test fit. That's a good bit of advice. Um, cut out with a knife and sprue cutters, apparently. Uh, you've got to use H2O and soap. What the hell is H2O? Do you know what that is? Hmm. No idea. I mean, what H2O? What could that be? Could that be a chemical symbol or something? I really don't know. Hmm. And I know it's water, by the way, guys. I'm being sarcastic. Paint. We've been here before. You've got to stare your paint clockwise. I don't want to see anyone stare and paint counterclockwise and complain that it goes wrong. Unless it's Rust-Oleum, and then it will go wrong anyway. But you have to stare your paint counter uh, clockwise. I know I screwed up then, didn't I? And uh, you've got to look and make sure it's yellow 15. All right? You have to do it. You've got to piss poorly apply your paint with a paintbrush. Uh, scribe off stuff with a knife and then glue. Uh, you've got to use a magnifying glass on the steering wheels only. And paint the steering wheel on the sprue. Has to be done. And you can only do this at 10 to, 10 to 2. Anything past 10 to 2, you can't do the steering wheels. You're not allowed. Then you have to cut it off with a knife. Uh, decals, you've got to cut off with very big stickers. And be very careful and look. Uh, you've got to keep them in the decal solution, uh, sorry, the water for 10 seconds, 30 degrees C. Um, so, yeah, don't use any hotter or colder. And then magically remove stuff off the paper and look confused with no face. So there's your welfare tips and tricks. Um, sorry, additional tips and tricks. My, my, my bad. So very important to follow those, especially that one. That is vital. You have to stare your paint clockwise. Please don't stare it counterclockwise. It just doesn't work. Over here go all your legends about stuff. Does it mention here about staring things the right way? No, I'm disappointed. It doesn't. Uh, and then all sorts of stuff. Colours. One thing that annoys me about Ravel, there's no consistency with the colour callouts. They'd be better just putting 94 with that rather than... Sorry, I'm zoomed out. I can't see. Uh, instead of putting uh, I with 94, just put the 94. It's easier to see the colour. Or as you're back and forth in the instructions. And after about 16 pages, we're finally getting somewhere now. There's all your sprue layouts there as well. So there's all the parts laid out. And then once the instructions. Like I say, these new instructions are much better than the old. They're much more clear and concise. Uh, start off the engine assembly. We won't. As always, we'll start with the bodywork because it's just what we do. Um, and yeah, we're building the engine up. Looks pretty straightforward. There's some decals to go on. You've got your colour callouts here as well. Very, very clear where everything goes. Which is what we like to see. Uh, the carb, ah, oh, the carb was on there with the rest of the stuff. Okay, it wasn't on the chrome sprue. I remember seeing the carb, but it was by the water pump. Yep, and there's all that assemble. Got the uh, dashboard there with all the decals. And you see there's a lot of decals with the dashboard. There really is. Uh, the seat going together with more decals, funnily enough. What decals are they then? What goes on the seat? 4, 12, 5, 13, 6, 14. Okay, so put silver decals on the seats or black. Huh, okay, that's different. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, we're getting our interior together, more decals, decal 10, which is. I can't see where decal 10 is. Where is 10? Nope, no idea, but there's lots of decals on the interior, there really is. There's lots. You've got quite a busy um, interior to paint up there, so it's going to look really good. Door cards. You've got some masking and painting to do. <coughs> Onto the chassis, suspension, the subframes, getting the engine in place as well. So I think it's going to build up really well, this, by the look of it. It looks to be quite a nice involved build. Exhaust system, rear shockers, and anti-roll bar. The exhaust coming out the back. All the leaf sprung suspension, the differential, the prop shaft. Wheels, <coughs> so it's requiring the centre to be painted black. 
which uh, will be brush painted on those if you're going to do that. Popping the wheels in place, getting the battery in. Wipe, is that a wiper motor? No, coil. That's probably the coil, is it, there? And what have you. It's looking good. Uh, the radiator and the radiator, the radiator and surrounds, hoses, uh, the rear light cluster, which fits in under the back. Now, I wonder if that can go on <clears throat> before the body goes on. It's a possibility. You need to drill your holes for your spoiler. So I'll probably forget to do that because I always do. So it looks like the rear section could go in. You've got your windscreen, which you're going to need. Going to be masking off at the bottom, which is quite unusual for a Revel kit. And then mating the chassis to the body. So the rear section goes on. We've got the front in a grille, which is all black anyway, so we, we want to leave that off prefer preferably anyway. That piece underneath there is calling for P. That's silver, isn't it? I'll just go through the uh, Encyclopedia Britannica at the front of the book to find the colour codes. There we go. Did I say E? What did I say? P. P for Paul. Which is gloss silver, so I'm assuming that's the body colour. It's calling for there. So again, separate panel. That can be left off, which is good. And we've got the under tray going on. Rear spoiler. These rear sections, so we're gonna have to go through and see what's color code and what's not. Uh, engine air cleaner going in place. Um, the mirrors. I mean, this is annoying. How how convoluted is that? What the hell? Yeah, so your door handles. They must be on the chrome sprue. And your mirrors. It's a bit confusing that there, to be honest. And this now, I like that. Yes, I like that. That is good. To get measurements is good. So this is where you're painting to. So this is your paint demarcation now. Uh, you put your decals over the top. So I do really like that. That's nice and thorough, to be fair to them. Yes, very impressed. And then there is our decal layout there. So I really like that blue scheme. I've been wanting to do a blue Mustang. I very nearly built my... Was it a Torino? The Fastback Torino I've got in this um yeah so i'm liking that it's good looking very very good yep i do like that scheme lots of decals on the exterior lots and then is that a decal 82 oh yeah the lower part of the decal as well what about the front bit 81 81 Yeah, it's very cool. Okay, yep, yeah, so, wow. What can I say? I think it looks like an epic kit. Uh, I'm going to be hard-pressed not to uh, start this right away. I really, really am. Anyway, let's go back to me for some final thoughts. Wow, there we go. Um, <laughs> that looks like a really good kit, to be fair. Um, this is a 30, it's between 30 and 35 pound kit. Uh, it's really heavy. Uh, depending on where you get it from. Um, is it worth the money? I think it is. I think Rebel's definitely up the game on some of their new releases. They're getting up there well into Tamiya money now. Tamiya brand new tool kind of money. Uh, but this kit, it does look really good. I'm very impressed with that kit. Um, it's going to have its shortcomings here and there. I, I know it will. It's a Rebel kit. They always tend to. Uh, the glass is one for a start because there are flaws in the glass. And I always say uh, the glass makes or breaks a kit. So always a bit of a shame to be a, see a bit of a flaw in the plastic of the glass. But it is what it is. It's just one of those things. I always expect some flaw in a kit somewhere. Unless you're paying absolutely stupid money. And even then that doesn't guarantee a perfect kit. But from what I've seen there. I am very impressed by that. And I'm going to be hard pushed not to start this. I've already got a few projects on the go. Uh, one is coming to an end. So we could pick it up I suppose. But it does look like a brilliant kit. So stay tuned. You might well see this on the channel very, very soon. But there we go. £30. I think I paid £31, something like that, I paid for it. I think it's well worth the money all day long. 
brand new tool. I think it's been out less than a month. And uh, it looks very, very promising. So there we go. If you've got the kit, if you've built the kit, or you've seen the kit built, let me know in the comments down below. Always interested to hear. Um, and if you want access to the full video build when I do this, you can become a patron in the description down below. You get access to the full three-part video build series on the build. You also get access to the condensed video build, all early access uh, to normal ISM. You get added to a Facebook Messenger chat group for supporters, a Facebook supporter group where you can post and share your work as well. And you get the Friday weekly bench update too. Uh, lots of other perks, including keeping me going with these videos. Without the supporters, I couldn't afford to buy kits like this. So uh, I thank all these guys whose names are flashing up on screen right now for the continued support. And of course, check out the description of the video where you can find anything and everything to do with me. All my social media is down there. Pro Scale Paint, UMP Retail, all the Facebook groups. Uh, you've got the Live the Bench software hangouts. There's an email address to get in touch with me if you want to drop me an email. My scale mate is there. My Etsy store selling all my built models in my case you can see there as well. Um, and make sure you sub to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, uh, click that bell notification and leave a comment. Like I say, if you built the, the kit, let me know. Or if you like the look of it, or you think you can buy it, comment down below. Let me know what you think of this brand new release from Revel. And uh, there we go. Thanks for watching today. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye.